You might have a pattern for a kami. You'll find this type of neckline finish here. It could be rounded, it could be a V, some strap. Today I've got options for you to be able to sew these areas in different ways. Super easy and practical. Stay with me. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. And today I have a really practical video for you. You might have sewn a kami before or a nighty depends on the type of fabric you use it can be super basic and casual something that you can sleep in you can also make a comfortable nighty in rayon spandex or cotton lycra you can even make a slip i've made a black slip that i wear under my dresses and then a really nice dress sledding knits i love them for this not for sleeping not for lounging for going out and i have been very very adventurous and varied the way I finish all these neckline areas and the strap areas so this is a resource for you if you want to start sewing this type of garment but the neckline and the binding the strap you find that it might be something you can't achieve with your regular sewing machine I'm here to show you that you can I don't have a cover stitch I don't have any specialty equipment just a basic sewing machine some of the sewing footage you'll see in this video is based on the Luna Kami from the Luna Loungewear Collection at Love Notions. It's a feature Friday pattern. It's only $5 today, but it doesn't have to be just for this pattern. It can be for any other pattern that is similar. If you have another Kami pattern, go ahead and apply these same techniques and you can have all these different options. You don't have to just do it one way. You can do it many, many ways. And that's what this video is all about. All the garments I've been making while I'm filming these sections have been based on a basic style that does not have have a shelf bra so the strap system this is not going to be particularly supportive for anything you are going to be wearing your proper bra underneath I think sewing a shelf bra underneath these types of garments could be super easy and straightforward if you have a smaller bust I would say up to a B cup maybe but going from C and above I think it needs a lot more steps and a lot more supplies and I've done a separate video about that but I'm not including any supportive strap or type of shelf bra situation in this one it's just about this if you're making a simple single layer garment that you are going to be wearing over a bra so I want to make that really clear the first way you can finish this area is with fold over elastic in my opinion I would only use fold over elastic if I was planning to make something that would go under clothes something that would never be seen outside so I wouldn't wear that cami on its own I don't like the look of fold over elastic I think it's more related to lingerie and something I would keep inside my clothes so if I wanted to make a cami to wear under she items I would use fold over elastic it's really easy to use you can find it in a lot of colors I'm going to show you how you can quickly finish this type of neckline whether it's rounded or whether it's a V the V you can do it so easy with fold over elastic and you can also include the strap area here so fold over elastic is not going to be particularly supportive or anything but you can get the strap length right by trial and error maybe looking at a ready-to-wear garment that you have that fits you well that you find that strap length is good so I'm going to show you one little cami I have that I used for inspiration it has a really nice cover here that has a similar fit to the garments that I want to create myself with better fabric this cami has a similar shape here like the amount of the arm side and the neckline too so I'm going to take this as a guide as how long I want these to be here so from each of these tips there I measured and there's 13 centimeters up or 26 centimeters around there I'll put the inches there so that's what I'm going to measure see that that one had a V and a rounded neckline and because I have a only I only have a C sewing cup size so I can get away with wearing my garments front to back if I want to there's not much difference you know with the front and the back so you could do that there are patterns that have a separate piece for the front and the back because there's different bust shaping on the front and whatnot in that case I wouldn't suggest you use your garment you know like I do but you could if you wanted you know you could always try they are fitted garments there's a lot of negative ease so I think you could get away with wearing garments front to back if you want to try the V neckline and rounded neckline on a garment and then just wear them interchangeably it's something that you could try I thought I'd show you my ready to wear cami that I was inspired for this two type of neckline thing so you can see one's high and rounder the other one's just a little bit lower and has a V and all they've done is sew the elastic at the back there and that's what I've done with mine. 
but before you start sewing fold over elastic I would suggest you get a little piece of scrap of the main knit you're going to work with a piece of your fold over elastic and try some settings on your machine first instead of experimenting when you're actually going to sew the garment I have fold over elastic which is what's recommended for more drapier ones like thinner drapier ones like this and this is the fold over elastic I have it's like velvety on both sides it's super soft and you can see the middle of it there it's extremely easy to fold because there's like a change in the elastic there in the middle I've been playing around with the fold over elastic and just wrapping it around some random piece of scrap <laughs> I want to use that one number eight which is a zigzag, so it does three stitches there, three stitches there, like that. That works really well for these types of elastics. These are the settings I ended up liking, 2.5 width and 2.5 length. That's how it looks like. So it's not too big, not too little. It will allow everything to stretch nicely. I'm going to show you how you can do a really, really easy V neckline using fold over elastic. This is a soft V, it's not a really deep, sharp V. If you have a rounded pattern, just take that rounded area in the center front and take it down about an inch and a half and make your curve again. And that will give you a soft V and that is something you can easily do to your pattern yourself without that feature being there originally. This is where you can start having fun with your own sewing. So let's see how you can put a fold over elastic there and it's so, so easy. This is one of the necklines. I'm gonna cut a piece of this elastic that is slightly shorter. I mark the middle of the neckline and the middle of the elastic there. And now I cut my elastic 90%. So only 10% shorter than the neckline. I don't want this to pucker or look ugly. And I mean, this is already smaller than my body anyway. So I think it'll be okay. And I've just folded it around the raw area there. And now I'm gonna go ahead and sew with that zigzag. So this V isn't a sharp V, it's just a really slight V shape, but not with the sharp point there so you can see how the elastic curves there that's how it looks I think it looks nice it's nice and neat and nothing actually fell out like from underneath the folded elastic so that's why I put so many pins and so this will just allow the neckline to stretch with me and now to finish this V it's not an actual V I'm gonna fold it right sides together. Find the middle here of this neckline there. And then by hand, I'm just gonna sew like a little diagonal thing like that. I don't wanna do it by machine because it's such a tiny little bit there. And I really want the edges of the elastic there to match. And I think it will just be easier doing it by hand. Okay, so I did that little stitch right there. And now I have a V on the front, as you can see. Right there in the center. And this is gonna be worn to the front or to the back depending on what I'm wearing on top. If you want to do the fold over elastic on a rounded shape, then it's the same thing that we've just seen. Just easier, you don't have to do the little stitch in the middle. It's the same thing. Now with these types of garments, you have partial armholes. It's only up to here, so from under here to there. And then at the back, it's the same. So that's what I call a partial armhole because it doesn't go all the way to the top, right? So usually with these garments, you would sew this area, including the strap going down and then catching the other partial armhole and you have free side seams. So let's see how to do that with a fold over elastic. You can see the top part of my cami here. This is the rounded bit. I've got the V neckline there and I've actually got wrong sides together here and the side seams have just been pinned there. I haven't sewn those yet. So I'm gonna grab my fold over elastic and just start wrapping it around the arm side area there. And I'm gonna stretch it make, it, make it slightly smaller in that area, not that much. But when I get to this point here, this is where the little straps are gonna start. So when I get to that point there, I'm gonna measure 26 centimeters of my elastic here. And that will become the strap and that will sort of be loose and then, I'm gonna grab the other arm side area there and start pinning down there towards the other side. So I'm just gonna show you roughly, although I will measure properly, but this is how it's gonna be. 
uh, it'll be one continuous piece of elastic that will finish the armhole there, the arm side, well it's a partial arm side. Then the rest will be the strap that goes on your shoulders and that for me is going to measure 26 centimeters and then that will continue wrapping from here to the other arm side there. So I'm going to measure well, pin it all and then show you. Okay, so everything's pinned. This is one of the armholes and then the elastic, I've just continued folding it onto itself there. This is what will be the strap and for my length, for what I like, this is 26 centimeters from that edge there to that edge there and it's just mimicking my ready to wear cami that fits me well. So once that's folded there, you reach this other tip there, fold over it there forms like an intersection and then it just continues so basically I'm gonna sew continuously from there I'll have a section that's just elastic and then I'll catch this side and I'll do that on both sides this is where the elastic is gonna finish that neckline there that was raw up to this point in there so it'll just cover it fold over it as per the name of the elastic and then I'll just sew over it. As I sew this elastic, I won't be like stretching it or doing anything to it. I'm just sewing it closed there with this zigzag stitch. So I'm not gonna be pulling it. Okay, so you can see one of these sides is done. It's super neat, it'll stretch with me. So I've got all the other side to do. Then after doing that, you have a completed garment minus the side seams. And then I'll flip these right sides together and then I'll just serge the edges. Side seams haven't been done, so I'll just put these right sides together and serge. This is how it looks serged inside, so that's just up to there. And I made sure to keep those elastics even so that the sides are even there. But then I have this length of excess, grab them all and thread them because this has a large opening. And then I have them there and then I can just tuck these this tail back in there. And that tidies up that area there and it's not gonna come apart. After sewing the side seams, you can push that seam allowance towards the back and give it a little hand tack right there so it keeps it flat. I've got the V shape facing the front right now, but I can just switch it around and have the round one on the front if I want. That's how that neckline looks. This is a neckline there, that little V was just a cheap one. Just sew a little bit behind there and that's fine. It's still modest, I'm not showing anything. Okay, so I've swapped it to the round neckline there, <laughs> you can still see. The shape is a little bit higher, it's rounder, it's nice. And at the back is just gonna look lower now because there's that V there. And I really like having the choice to be swapping them around. Now, if you don't wanna use fold over elastic, if you want to use binding, if you wanna use the same fabric from your garment maybe, you can use a binding technique. Now, if you are using a really lightweight fabric for your main fabric, like ITY or rayon spandex, bamboo spandex, just those types of materials that are super, super stretchy and light, those fabrics are not going to work for binding there's just not enough spandex not enough recovery for this to hold up you know over time this could end up being super long and stretched out and formed and it's your neckline is going to gape so in that case don't use that main fabric you can use a cotton lycra for your bands or an athletic knit so i'm going to show you some examples two garments i made using this technique that has a fold on the front and on the back so on the inside, it's really, really neat with a fold. I'm gonna show you some basic dimensions that you can use as a reference, the ones I use all the time, and how to sew these on, the same type of cami or dress. I've got all these little binding pieces. The neckline for both is finished the same way. Make sure the greatest stretch of the fabric is going this way. I'm going to finish my binding, the inside edge of the binding folded and not raw. I cut it a little bit taller here. So my binding is almost two inches tall right here. In metric that would be 4.7 centimeters. That's how tall I find that it works well to get it past this bias tape maker that has 25 on the back, 25 millimeter. So once you pass it through there you'll get two folds and the finished width will be 
one inch, which is 25 millimeters. That's why it says 25 on the back. This one is a cotton spandex with great stretch and recovery. This is what I'm going to use on the cami that the main fabric is a rayon spandex. You don't want to make this type of binding with rayon spandex or ITY, something very light. It's just not going to hold it up. So this is more structured, this is heavier and it will mesh well with the front and the back pieces that have rayon spandex. And this print is an athletic knit and my front and back pieces have the same fabric. So I'm using the exact same fabric because this is appropriate for that. So now I'm going to show you how this binding is wrapped around the raw edges of the neckline. With this type of binding, because there's a fold on the back and a fold on the front, I find it's too bulky to do a V with this technique. I'll show you that later with another technique but for this one let's just keep it with rounded shapes rounded necklines this is one of the camis i'm making and this is the neckline this is the front so the back is actually the same and i've taken my binding and wrapped it around the raw edge i've got a fold on the front and the back i just like it neat like that and the binding is slightly shorter than the neckline of course so i did stretch it out while i was hand basting it to make sure it's all good and now i'm going to sew this on the edge and i'm going to use my twin needle for that I think it looks pretty, it looks like a fake cover stitch. I don't have a cover stitch, but I think this looks really nice. And when you sew with a twin needle, on the other side, you get a type of zigzag. So it also allows this to stretch. There is negative V's around the chest. So this is a perfect way to sew it. And I love how this looks. To sew this binding, I'll be using a twin needle. I think it works really, really well. It is a stitch that stretches because at the back you get a little zigzag stitch. Now let's see the binding on the partial armholes, including the strap. It's all one continuous seam. After sewing that short area there, then comes putting the binding on the armhole. It's very short, so this long binding covers part of the armhole. I also made this section a little bit shorter so that it would pull into the body. And then you have part of the binding that's just on its own and then it goes off there and catches the neckline on the other side and then goes off to the other armhole. Same as on this side. Once the binding is on, then we can pick up and sew the side seams. So up to now you've only seen a twin needle you don't have to use a twin needle if you don't have one you can use your regular jersey needle for these type of bindings you know you're going through a lot of layers i think a number 90 or 14 is good so that's what i'm using i'm going to show you my settings for a narrow zigzag it can look really really nice like a straight stitch but will also allow that stretch I suggest you don't use straight stitching for these types of areas because over time these stitches could pop. These are fitted garments with negative V's, you know, you're pulling them off and on your body. So a narrow zigzag stitch is a great one that looks like a straight stitch but it's not. Another option for top stitching this binding is using a narrow zigzag stitch. It'll still look like a straight stitch but it will allow the stretch. So I have my zigzag setting here, 0.5 width, so that means it's really, really shallow. And then the length, depending on your fabric and the layers, could be 2.5, maybe even 3. I think for this time I'm doing 3 because my fabric is not that lightweight. You just saw me do a twin needle, that was fine, the print was pretty busy, so I don't think it'll be that noticeable. But when I have a black and white print like this houndstooth, I really don't want the double stitching in black to go through the white that much, I don't think it'll look that nice. So I've purposely left that fold mainly on the black right there of the houndstooth print and for this print I'm going to prefer just one single stitch right there that's going to hold it down. As you can see I've just wrapped my binding around and hand basted it on. I'm not doing it like sewing it and then flipping it and sewing it again. I'm not doing that. I think this is easier and works just as fine. This is the section where I've just got the strap area and then the partial armhole. So I'm just going to go ahead and top stitch this. Whether I do twin needle or a narrow zigzag will mainly depend on the print. 
so you can barely see the black stitch going across that little white area I think it's really discreet I think it's fine it's catching the other side and because it's a narrow zigzag you can see the fabric will stretch and give enough for you to put this over your body and not have the stitches popping so I wouldn't do a straight stitch here I think the narrow zigzag is good so you've seen that part I'll just continue and do all the rest same thing I mentioned I was going to show you what I do with the side seams just a little bit of hand sewing there to hold it in place after you sew the side seam that includes the binding right there and that matches on the other side and I want to leave the seam towards the back this is the back part so just to keep it as flat as possible you just do a little bit of hand sewing here or else it could get really bulky and feel bulky but when you sew it down it flattens this area you can see I'm tacking that seam allowance flat right there so that it's always towards the back and I'm doing it right on top of the binding so it won't be visible from the right side of the garment at least for this technique when the last seam that you sew is the side seam there are others where you can do the binding a little differently but at least for this one this is what you do you do the same thing if this was fold over elastic it would be the exact same thing this is my Luna loungewear nighty, but I didn't make it to be a nighty. I made it to be a summer dress and this is an athletic knit I really love the print I think it's really cute with the purple and the pink and the black up on the top you can see the cover is really nice the neckline is rounded front and back the same it's not excessively low and I love the result of the binding with the twin needle as well. It allows it to stretch and look really pretty. I really enjoyed doing that. Now one easy way that you can save a lot of time is for the front and the back do bands instead. Not binding, bands are so easy to sew. I like to make mine two inches by the length that you need. You measure at the stitch line, multiply that by 0.9. You're usually using a fabric that's a little bit more structured for these areas, so I wouldn't go smaller than that. Two inches by whatever length you have, and then you can finish all this area with binding because you can't finish all this with a band. You know, you have to do some type of binding here on the sides, but having the band there can save you a lot of time if you're pressed for time or if you're newer to this and you want to do something easy that's going to look nice let's see how to do a band so 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 easy i like this band system because it's really easy and it's also going to add height to my neckline so just match up the sides and then match up the center fronts there and then it's just like sewing any band do it on the serger keep the band on the top and stretch the band slightly to meet the neckline underneath while you're surging try not to trim away anything the seam allowance for the pattern is a quarter of an inch so that means that you can sew it directly on the serger and you have no issues after sewing on this band you can top stitch it if you want to i find that this fabric is nice and structured and i don't really need to do that for it to lay flat for the front i didn't use binding i used a band instead front and back and then for the partial armholes and straps, I do have binding from the same houndstooth material. So if your pattern doesn't have that option, doesn't matter, you can do it yourself. Just consider that if you're using this yeast that I told you to cut two inches tall, when you fold it, it's gonna be an inch minus the quarter of an inch seam allowance. You're basically adding about three quarters of an inch to the height there of your neckline. If you want that, that is great if you want a higher neckline. But if you would like it a little lower, maybe just trim away your pattern piece by that amount and then add your band to get the original height. But that's just something that you can figure out yourself and it's all part of customizing. And that's what's great about sewing because you can make it how you want it to be. Now, another way that you can do binding is not have that fold inside like this one, is have a raw edge. Although I don't leave it raw, I serge it because I can't deal with raw edges. But in essence, you could leave it raw. You don't need a serger. Knits don't unravel like wovens do, so it's not like your garment is gonna tear apart over time. It's gonna be fine. It's just a visual thing for me. This is a technique that gives you less bulk here because there are less layers to sew on. And it could be super practical to even do a little V, a little cheat V if you want to, or you can do it round. You can use the same technique for this area of the partial armholes. Let's see how you can sew a rounded neckline here. Here we have a cami and a rounded neckline. You can find this in the front or the back. It doesn't really make a difference. And here is a binding piece. For this technique and for the seam allowance that we're gonna use, which is 3 8 you need this to be one and 3 8 of an inch right there, or three and a half centimeters. And when you measure this at the stitch line at 3 8 measure that, you multiply that by 
0.9 and that will make the band 10% shorter just to bring it in a little. So I've put a pin at the center front of the binding and the center front of the neckline and we place these right sides together like this and then pin it on the sides. Now you can see that on one of the long ends I have surged it just to make it neat. If you don't surge that it will end up being raw inside which is fine it won't unravel but it doesn't look pretty to me so that's why I do that. And then you have this other edge that's raw that's going to match the raw edge of the neckline. So these are right sides together here. It's a leather look jersey, a little bit shiny so you can clearly see that's the right side of my binding. So now all we do is sew these together with 3 8 seam allowance, slightly stretching the binding to match the length of the neckline underneath. I'm using a shallow zigzag stitch and a 3 8 seam allowance to sew these together. Okay, so that's the right side of the cami. Now what you do is just keep the seam allowance up and take this binding and just wrap it snugly around the seam allowance like that. The surged edge there is going to cover the seam at the back by a tad. I'm going to hand baste it down and then we're going to stitch in the ditch right there. Okay, there is the hand basting done. That's the other side. I'm also going to use a narrow zigzag. It'll look almost like a straight stitch. I'm doing it with a regular presser foot, but I'm sewing right where the seams meet and it's easy to see because these fabrics although they are both black they are contrasting okay there it is it allows stretch it is a narrow zigzag so this is not going to collapse on you we've caught this on the other side now you don't have to stitch in the ditch you can actually sew it right there on the edge you can use a twin needle you know I'm just doing it like this because I think it looks nice but you have options it's just important to sew it down in some way that will allow stretch I personally don't like a zigzag stitch there I think it doesn't look very nice that's why I prefer to stitch in the ditch there with a shallow zigzag now using the exact same technique let's see how to sew a V neckline this is my V neckline and I've done a little dot here where I'm going to snip and the technique for the binding is going to be exactly the same and it's just got a little step at the end that will give it the V shape but for now we just snip into the dot right there this is 3 8 seam allowance so that's what I've drawn there this is the right side of my garment and now the snip is going to allow this to end up being straight like this and this is how we sew the binding I've put a pin at the center front of the binding this center is going to match that dot right there exactly there and then the rest is just going to match here you can see it's a little shorter so the technique is the same it's just one straight stitch with the difference that under here you have this area open like that. I'm going to sew this with the binding on the top and the neckline on the bottom. But for this little V part I really want to see that snip. And I really want to sew in the right place. So I'm going to sew this little section maybe 3 8 from the snip this way and that way. This way. Okay you can see I sewed right past that little snip so I don't have to worry about that. And now I can flip this. And sew it like you're supposed to, stretching the binding on the top to meet the neckline. And I'll sew up to where I stitch there and then pick up here and finish on the other side. Same thing. Okay, so we've sewn that in the same way, stitching the ditch. This is where I snipped. So when I look at it from this side, I drew a faint little mark there right in the center before sewing this, but the snip is right there. So now I'm going to fold these right sides together here. And now with a straight stitch, I'm going to sew this diagonally here, 45 degree angle, and that will form the V. There is a little diagonal seam, and now when we open it like this, it will have the V. You could have made the change to the pattern yourself and made it a V neckline if your garment doesn't have it as an option. So if you like a cubby pattern, you've made it, it's just got a rounded neckline and you want a V option, you can do it yourself. Super easy. Now I want to show you another method where you can finish the neckline, the front and the back, whichever way you want with binding or a band, that doesn't really matter. Then you can actually sew the side seams of your cami or dress and then you're left with this partial armhole all in one. You can finish that in one way and then do the straps in another, maybe using some bra strap supplies like rings or bra strapping. It's an option if you have these around and if you just want to do something different. Let's see. 
you'll see a bit of lace going on a garment i'm gonna show you super soon <laughs> little sneak peek so let's see this one it might be something you want to try and just to have something different you know here is the front partial armhole and that's the back partial armhole we have already sewn the side seams there and on the front i have this lace overlay just ignore it if you're not doing that you know you could just have a single layer it doesn't really make a difference <laughs> And I have pinned my binding here, letting a little bit protrude about an inch there and about an inch there. I just cut a longer piece of binding. I pinned it here in the center and just pulled it a little tighter here so that this binding ends up being about 10% shorter than the actual partial armhole. And I've just pinned them together, right sides together. And we sew this just the same way that we did this binding here. It's just got this shape here and you have that seam there. So that is how it looks after I've sewn it and hand basted it. Flip the binding to the inside. I'm catching it right there. And then I'm going to have these little bits left over here. And this is where I'm going to pull out my rings. These are bra rings, 18 millimeter or three quarters of an inch. And with this little bit there, I'm just going to put the ring inside and then just fold this back and then sew it right there close to the edge. I'll do that here on the back and here on the front is the same thing. Take a ring. I'm gonna have a ring basically on the front and on the back and then I'm gonna measure the length I need for my bra strapping. This is three quarters of an inch. It's really nice structured elastic for bras and that's what I'm gonna use to just put it right here on the front, sew it at the back there and then the other side on the back. And that's how these straps are gonna be finished which is another option. You can also cover the bra strapping with fabric like I've shown you and then the process would be exactly the same. If you've already made it before, you probably know how long this needs to be. Otherwise, I would suggest sewing it permanently on the back and leaving it long here and then adjusting it with the camion on the front and then just pulling this as much as you need. I'm not gonna use sliders or anything like that. I don't have any of those, uh, so this won't be adjustable. I'll just adjust it permanently the length that I know that it needs to be. And that's it, super easy. And this is another way you can finish this part of a cami if you want to use bra strapping. Now that I've sewn the binding, I have put my ring on that tiny little piece that I had left over from the binding. I've been under there. And I'm gonna use my zip up presser foot to sew that together. I find it's the type of presser foot that is gonna get me closest to the edge of the metal ring. That's done. And now I'm gonna do it on the other side. You saw that I've used bra strapping there. I have bought quite a few few yards of that to have available. I found some in the three quarter inch wide option. I think I've really tried hard to find the one inch. I just can't find any. I know it exists, but I can't find it. But I think three quarters of an inch is good. It is the exact same width that most of my bra straps are. This is three quarters of an inch. This one here is half an inch, this strap. And you can see a tiny little bit here tiny little bit there I don't think it's offensive to anyone if you want to wear it like this I, I don't feel bad about wearing my strap like this I wouldn't want to wear spaghetti straps really really tiny ones and then have a lot of the bra strap show so if you can get bra strapping that is three quarters of an inch wide it'll probably just cover the whole strap and it'll be less noticeable so that's why sometimes if it matches my fabric and my vision I will use that instead of doing these other techniques you know so I'll just bind partially, but the straps won't be with the binding. I've used my leather look jersey for the binding. I have some bra rings and bra strapping there. Now, if you want to take your strap a step above and cover it with the fabric you're using here, if you're using something nice, a print, you can cover that. And let me show you how. If I sew this one lengthwise, right sides together and form a tube, it can be like the cover for my bra strapping. I want that really firm bra strapping for my straps. So I thought if it's covered by this fabric from the main dress, I think it's gonna look really pretty. My bra strapping is three quarters of an inch wide or 18 millimeters if you can find that notion you could do this trick whenever I want to turn something right sides out I have my trusty safety pin it's really strong and it just makes turning really really easy and ITY is pretty easy it slides on each other so it's very easy to turn right sides out and then I'll have my little tube now I'm gonna put my safety pin on one of the extremes of the brass strapping elastic and just slide it inside and just start pushing it through and the feet of the covering that I made the little tube 
woofy. The elastic really nice and snug. It's just gonna make the strap look pretty but also have the strength of the bra strapping inside. ITY is a fabric that is very very flimsy and very lightweight. You could definitely not make straps with this type of fabric. Even if you used a lot of clear elastic in there I just think it's not a fabric that would work really well. So this is how I'm getting around using really lightweight fabric. Here are the straps made. No one would know what is inside that there's elastic in there. I have searched the edges together. I still might need to trim one of the sides because I haven't tried them on. Then I just repeat the same for the other side. So then once you have your covered bra strapping then you can just put it on there with your rings and just do the regular thing. It's just that you won't have that bra strapping just visible there. It'll be covered with your nice fabric and that could be really nice. But I suggest you do that when your main fabric is a lighter weight fabric so that the strap doesn't end up being too thick and too bulky. My straps are actually bra strapping covered in the main ITY fabric made a little tube and put the bra strapping in there. I have those little rings that I could use in the front, made everything so much easier. I hope this was helpful and motivates you to try these types of garments. They could be basic, you know, you could find these for inexpensive prices, but the quality really is not there. I have some in my wardrobe in diverse colors. They don't have good longevity. The fabric is always really low quality. So if you can get yourself some in your wardrobe that you've made yourself in the colors that you need, in the styles that you want, I think it's a garment that is really worth sewing and wearing and choosing the best fabrics, choosing nice quality materials, taking your time to learn something new. And I think it could be really rewarding. So these can be super basics. You can wear these under clothes. You can make pajamas out of these patterns, but you can also make regular clothes with other types of neat materials and I've made dresses. You can do a lot of things with these patterns. You will see two videos from me in succession basically <laughs> because I wanted to film a general technique video for you to have as a resource not linked to one specific pattern but in the next video you'll see some new camis that I've made using the Luna loungewear collection from Love Notions. It's a feature Friday pattern so I will leave you in the description box all the information about the pattern. It's only $5 today and about the previous content I've made for it. You'll see something super different applying some of these techniques I've shown you here in the next one. So yeah, two from me today. I hope it's not too much. <laughs>